Henrietta Heath was born on September 14, 1923, to Reynold Heath, who was also known as Ran, and his wife, Mabel Mae Thomas. Henrietta was born in Van Buren County, Arkansas. Just three months after she was born there was a race riot. The assault and murder of a white woman sparked a race riot in the small town of Catcher near Van Buren, on December 29, 1923, that ended in the death of an innocent black man, two death sentences, and the exodus of black families from the community. Catcher, Arkansas was situated about four miles southeast of Van Buren, and Catcher had a large African-American population. On December 28, 25-year-old, Effie Latimer was shot in the back and hit over the head with the gun. Latimer, a white woman, was found unconscious on the ground when a friend came to visit her that afternoon. She gained consciousness long enough to tell a doctor that she recognized her shooter as, Son Bettis, a local African-American farmer, adding, two other men were present, though she was not able to identify them. Bettis was immediately arrested and placed in jail, where he denied any involvement stating that he was picking cotton around the time that Latimer would have been shot. The following day, two more men were arrested. Charles Spurgeon Rux Jr., age 26, and John Henry Clay, age 14, were taken into custody in connection to the murder. According to newspaper reports at the time, Deputy Sheriff W. A. Bushmayer said, Rux had confessed to the murder, but according to the case files, that never happened. I do not think these three men were the murderers," Michael Anthony, a doctoral candidate at the University of Arkansas, said this week. I will say, it is far more common for a spouse, to kill their wife after a dispute in the house. Anthony referenced the fact that Latimer's husband had left the home six days prior, taking half of everything. On December 29, a mob of an estimated 500 white citizens, surrounded the Fort Smith jail where the men were being held and demanded that they be handed over. The men were quietly moved from the jail and sent to Little Rock, where they would await trial. At the same time, a number of people had made their way to Catcher and began threatening the black residents, defacing the local cemetery, and digging up the remains of some African-American corpses buried there, in order to burn them. Charles Rux S.R., the father of the accused, was killed during the riot, Newspapers at the time said he was resisting arrest, but Anthony believes, it was a lynching. After the white community tried and failed to lynch Bettis and Rux in jail, they seemed to turn to their families, Anthony said. The occupation of Catcher lasted several days. On December 30th, 11 black men were arrested, and charged with night riding, which is an act of violence, and vigilantism performed at night, and typically in disguise. J. Richardson a Sebastian County state representative, has a great-grandfather that was part of the group accused of night riding that night. Richardson knew about what happened in the Catcher area for most of his life, but didn't know he was connected until he looked into it a little more. He got together with Anthony, and more was discovered. My family owned some land over there during that time, Richardson said. They were part of the main group that was identified. Richardson said that his great-grandfather was killed during the riot, but does not have enough information to determine how it happened. The 11 men were hiding in a log cabin when the group that was terrorizing the town found them. Governor Thomas McRae allowed a few men access to a machine gun from a local company in Ozark. Once the men in the cabin learned about the machine gun they surrendered, and were found with two shotguns, and a small amount of ammunition. After their arrest, they were sentenced to one year in jail on counts of night riding, Notices were placed around Catcher, threatening the black community to leave within the next five days or, face the consequences. Around 50 families left Catcher, many of whom owned land, and never returned. From January 4 to the 5, 1924, Bettis and Rox were tried separately for murder. They were convicted and sentenced to death by electrocution, which occurred on February 15, 1924. The trial was expedited under the 258 Act of 1909. The strongest evidence against the two, was a very detailed statement of the crime, allegedly offered by Clay. According to a prison file at the time, Clay was mentally slow, and unable to read or write. However, the statement attributed to him was very detailed, and he later retracted it when questioned by his attorney. Clay was sentenced to hard labor at the state penitentiary for the rest of his life. 
In 1928, he was found dead from exposure in a field near a Cummins prison camp in southeast Arkansas. The digging up of black cemetery graves and the burning of those bodies seemed to embody the racial cleansing that was occurring, not just physically but also metaphorically, Anthony said. The white community was literally trying to destroy all traces of the black community that had lived there. Like many stories from this time including the Tulsa race riot, and the Elaine massacre, the story of the Catcher riot is not well known by the general public. I think there were a lot of things like this around the state that people aren't aware of, Richardson said. By design, those things weren't publicized or made available for historical purposes. That's unfortunate because history is a benefit to all of us. Juneteenth, the holiday celebrating the emancipation of slaves in the United States falls on June 19th. Richardson said that it gives them a day to celebrate, in his opinion, the true freedom of America. I believe that this incident may have spooked Mabel Thomas, perhaps to the point of leaving Van Buren, Arkansas. The reason why I believe that this theory might have some validity to it, it's strictly a conjuring created by the facts. You see, Henrietta was born on September 14, 1923, and the riot took place on December the 28th of that same year. On January 17, 1924, Ran Heath, had remarried. Just four months after the birth of Henrietta the name of his new bride was, Bertha Modena, her maiden name is unknown at this time. Henrietta was just a little over four months old, and Mabel May Heath would be turning 19 years old on May 6, 1924, a little close to eight months after giving birth to her daughter Henrietta. It is not certain that the riot was the cause of Mabel leaving. It could be argued that perhaps her husband ran, could have been engaged in extramarital affairs, during Mabel's pregnancy. The truth is, we will never know the real cause of the separation. The 1930s federal census shows us that, Ran Heath was still living in Van Buren, Arkansas, and that he was married to Bertha Heath, and Henrietta was six years old, and living in the house with a stepbrother named, John L. Moore, who was 18 at the time. With regard to Mabel May Heath, I am unable to find any definitive records that would indicate her whereabouts. However, I did find a 1930 federal census, of a Mabel Thomas, age 22, living in Camden, Washita County, Arkansas, at 612, Pearl Street. She was renting the home at that location, and working as a seamstress in a dry cleaning plant at the time. This particular census shows that she was by herself, for she is the only person listed on this particular 1930 census. Now, when we take a look at the 1940 census for Rand Heath, what we discover is that Henrietta is no longer living with her father. At this time, Henrietta should be around 16 years of age. We find her at age 16, on the 1940 census of Mabel May Thomas, who is now, Mabel May Powell. She had remarried a man named, Reuben Watson Powell, who was born on May 2, 1905. I'll give you more information on him a little later in this fat recording. This 1940 census shows, Reuben W. Powell as the head of the house, Mabel Powell as his wife, and one stepson named Amos Haynes, age 18, and Henrietta who is listed as the daughter of the head of the house, so, she must have been adopted by Reuben Powell. Also listed in this census is Judith M. Powell, age 5, Reuben E. Powell, age 2, and a lodger named, Herbert Smith, age 52. The 1940 census for Henrietta also shows that she had completed the 8th grade. So that prompted this investigation to look into her life, researching any school surrounding her home location, which was at 203 Ash Street, Newton, Harvey County, Kansas. To date, no information on Henrietta's education has not become available. Reuben Watson Powell is believed to be the son of Ned Powell. He was born on the 17th of January, 1896, in Chautauqua, Neosho County, Kansas. His 1930 census places him at, 200 East 12th Street, Newton, Harvey County, Kansas, a six-minute drive, or a 50-minute walk from the home that he would one day share with his future wife, Mabel May Thomas. It was approximately 2.5 miles away. At the time of the 1940 census, Henrietta Heath is now using the surname Jones, and she is 16 years old. After taking a look into Amos Haynes, the only Haynes in this household, I discovered that he was born in Van Buren, Arkansas, the same place that Henrietta was born. But because the 1930 federal census records Henrietta's being single and living alone, 
It could be possible that she knew Amos Haynes while in Arkansas, and they both moved to Newton, Kansas, perhaps, to get a little help from Abel Powell. Amos Haynes was born on September 6, 1921, in Van Buren, Arkansas, and would have been a little over three years old when the riots broke out in Van Buren. Mabel Thomas would have been around 15 or 16 years old when Amos Haynes Jr. was born. It could be argued that both Henrietta and Amos might have gone to school together. It is believed that Amos Haynes Jr. and his father, Amos Haynes Sr., also lived in Arkansas. Although we don't know what part of Arkansas, I believe it would be safe to assume that it was in Van Buren. At some point, Amos Haynes Sr. and Mabel May Thomas were married, and Amos Haynes Jr., who is listed as a stepson to the head of the house, was in fact the son of Mabel May Powell, making Henrietta and Amos Jr. half-brother and sister. Therefore it is highly probable that both of them helped each other to reach their mother from Arkansas to Kansas in the 1930s after Henrietta was recorded as being on her own in the 1930 census, which showed her living in Camden, Arkansas. In 1942, Amos Haynes enlisted in the military. His registration card shows that he lived at 434 West 4th Street, in Newton, Kansas. Listed as the person who will always know his address is, R. W. Powell. Between 1940 and 1941, Henrietta met a man, who went by the name of, Warren Osborne Jones. He was born on February 5, 1920. In Kansas, his 1930 census says that his home in 1930 was in Richland, Labette County, Kansas. Together they had three children, all boys. Ray Darrell Jones in 1942, Amos Randall Jones in 1944, and Eugene Jones, who was born in 1945. Unfortunately, Ray Darrell lived to be 13 years old before he died, and he lived long enough to see his youngest brother Eugene Jones die when he was just five years old. Leaving Amos Randall Jones, the only living son of Amos and Henrietta Jones. Sometime between 1944 and 1955. Henrietta was in her early 20s or mid-20s when she divorced her husband Amos Jones. Henrietta then met a man named, Thomas Ragland. He was the last-born son of John and Rosetta Ragland, and in 1943, Thomas Ragland fathered a son by a woman named Odelia Jewett. His son's name was Charles Eugene Ragland. He was born on January 2, 1943. Now according to the 1940 census, Thomas H. Ragland had completed two years of high school, and he was around the age of 22 when he met Henrietta. The two love birds fell in love and got married, and had three children. This time, all girls. Valerie Ann in 1947, Mabel Lorna in 1953, and Tommy Etta in 1955. Valerie Ann, the eldest of the girls was three years old when her half-brother Eugene died and she was eight years old when her oldest half-brother Ray Darrell died. According to oral history, the horror did not end there. When Valerie Ann was around three years old, according to her, she was helped out of a two-story house window. She sustained a broken jaw, and she suffered trauma from this incident for the rest of her life. When Mabel Lorna was born, it is said that when Henrietta got home with her baby, Mabel Lorna, upon approaching the front porch, there was a tricycle in the way, but Henrietta tripped over it before anybody could do anything. So, Thomas, and Henrietta got back in the car and went back to the hospital. Because baby Mabel Lorna had gotten her leg broken. Now, after the death of Henrietta's two boys, and the misfortunes of two of her daughters. By 1960, Thomas Ragland had relocated his three girls, Amos, and his wife, to Denver, Colorado. Thomas Ragland who is affectionately called Ted, found a place to live at, 1265 West 10th Avenue. At some time between 1967 and 1968, for some reason unknown to the family, Henrietta moved to El Paso, Texas. And on October the 8th, 1968, Henrietta Ragland died from having an extremely fatty liver. She is buried at Concordia Cemetery, in El Paso, Texas. Thomas Harrison Ragland raised their three girls, and Henrietta's last living son Amos Jones, and his son named Charles Eugene Ragland moved to Colorado from Kansas in order to be closer to his father. The Black Ancestry Network group would like to thank you for listening to this family ancestry tree recording. If a member of your family tree was mentioned in this fat recording, and you would like to have a fat recording of this family member, 
email the Black Ancestry Network Group at gmail.com. Requesting the fat recording. And please take the time to like and share this fat recording with other members of your family. Don't forget to click on the notification bell so that you will be notified anytime a new fat recording, in search of investigation, or deep story is uploaded. Until next time, thanks for coming to The Bang. Bang.